as well. All right, this is the last try. If this, this doesn't work, then the last one is gonna stay. But yeah, uh, this is, uh, it's uh, Christmas Eve and I was going through the stuff that I've written in the past year and I really like this one. So I thought about sharing it with you. Uh, let's see if you like it too. It's called An Ode to Reading on the Face of Emptiness. And it goes like this. So today, May the 5th of 2021, was the last day of my PhD program that started in 2015. I've officially graduated. I am a doctor now, I guess. You've probably noticed already, if you are the kind of person that reads the stuff that I write, that I am not particularly fond of the whole idea. I notice myself empty, devoid of the pleasure that I thought this was going to bring me. Not that I was looking for any pleasure, but as someone who's climbing a sharp mountain, I couldn't help but think, every once in a while, that once I got to the summit, I would be at least somewhat contented about the whole fucking thing. But no. The only thing that offered some emotional relief was writing that past log entry where I realized how fucked up in the head I really am, and how broken, how empty. And I still don't know if I meant all that stuff, but I wrote it. So I think there is at least some truth in it about how I feel. I've been drinking for four days straight. It's been a while since I did that. I haven't been getting shit faced drunk, but drinking four beers or so every day from like 4 p.m. to 3 a.m. So I guess it is not that bad. But I would be fooling myself if I didn't recognize the face of my old friend depression when I see it. I also had a dopamine rush with Lais that made everything more vivid. And also, I was still pushing on with little tasks that were helping me keep away from my thoughts. Six years it took me to realize that I am always running away from them, from my thoughts. A successful story of occupational therapy, I would say. Because of course I know, I mean, I am trapped with them. My thoughts in my head all the time. One can't ignore that. And now that things got quiet and the pressure of work is not there anymore, I am having to face them again. I suddenly remembered that since I was little, I used to dread them. Like, in my opinion, it is not like schizophrenia or anything serious, but I remember hiding from my thoughts in books. I remember that any time I was unbearably sad or upset, I would just read to pass the time, to forget who I was or that I was even there, reading for days on end, only stopping to pee or remembering to eat because mom knew, and she would bring me a plate with something and a drink and she used to sat with me for a while, light up a smoke and talk for a bit. I guess just to make sure I was okay. Because she knew. Of course she knew. And I remember her eyes lighting up with pride and some sort of crystalline love. Because she enjoyed finding me lost in white or sometimes yellowish pages. A fruitful bias that one was. Since it turned me into a precocious witty little piece of... Reading is a gateway drug. Well, maybe not. But for me, reading always paired well with a pack of cigarettes. Even if I was 12 or whatever. There was nothing like drowning feelings in words written by some obscure author from decades ago in the midst of camel miles smoke or alitas if the money was short. I've been drinking for four days straight. And it would make me ask for help or at least ask one of my four friends to talk to me if it wasn't because of books. When I read, I time my drinks. On one hand, because it is hard to hold the Kindle with only one hand, as it is with a decently sized book. I mean, not that book sizes matter, but you get what I'm saying. On the other hand, because it gives drinking a purpose. After a devastating stanza or a full-blown epiphany, 
A cold etheric fluid bathing a dry esophagus produces just the right amount of endorphins, allowing the being to disconnect just for a second from the narrative, settling the thoughts in real life, yet preventing the whole self from coming back. It numbs just the right way. It permeates the neural paths to get ready for the next half hour absorption. And it reminds the biological self that it needs to stretch the contorted knees and it takes the vertebrae to twist to prepare for the next dive. I desert from existence when I read. Fully conscious, my palms were sweating on a rifle sitting next to Ernesto Guevara de la Serna. I've conspired with the Tupavaras. I debated with I debated the conundrum with Raskolnikov. I revolted in the moon. I philosophized with robots. I became a beetle and not. I floated down the rabbit hole with my skirt. I was imprisoned with a jaguar that held the truth. I asked a pig to dress as me to avoid going to a party. I I was a sex addict. I learned about the fundamental particles. I discovered them. I saw yellow butterflies and I was burned in a furnace. I found it all, all the emotions, all the experiences I dread in real life I've found. Yet again, every time I open a book or a file for that matter, I always find new ones, emotions, experiences. Reading is a mental kaleidoscope. The slightest turn of your point view, that is, your perception, and a love story can turn into one of abuse. A story of bravery and honor can turn into one of the frailty of humankind. One story of childish illusions can turn into an existential mindfuck. Hold on tight when reading. Reading turns you inside out like that fog in the movie. Reading is also dangerous. It doesn't take much reading to notice that. Books are burned as a symbol. Radical ideas have historically been met by fire. They say paper burns at 451 Fahrenheit or so. Yet writings are so indelibly carved in our minds that they have survived. Pre-Hispanic Mexican cultures didn't even need letters or words to write. We humans can write in our minds. Reading is idea and sound. We write songs that hoist the spirits or crush them. We humans commune between stories that become letters on a paper, melodies on a drum, a piano, a guitar, a synth. We write the music that accompanies our existence and shapes our narratives. The non-hearing write on space and time, their hands ink in our minds. Momentarily, our visual cortex perceives a shape, a gesture, an eyebrow twitch, and suddenly we know exactly what they mean. A story written in flesh vanishes in a second and immediately our mental processes allow us to access a whole world, a vision. The non-visual can read with their hands if needed. Bumps lead the way to the story, as mountains on a language map that projects itself from their fingertips to their brains, and there it creates shapes, words and concepts, the whole world as sounds and touch, the stories they will tell. Reading equalizes, since reading is not only for the literate. We read emotions in our fellow humans, we read intent in their actions. We read sentiment in speech. We project ourselves in every single thing we do, and people read that sometimes. We read a story on an immobile painting. We have read the story of the world on a photograph of the human eye, or a photograph of a fetus, or of an atom, or, or a distant galaxy. Depictions of human existence, existence are traversing space on Voyager's golden disc right now for someone to read someday. Reading leads to writing. Humans, gregarious as we are, 
need to be acknowledged. We have shared our ideas and writings since we acquired the ability to do so. Our gift and our malediction, perhaps. Primitive beings felt the necessity or maybe just the comfort of drawing shapes on stones. I write this well, I, I wrote this on a sophisticated machine based on ultra miniaturized silicon semiconductors. We are physically capable of writing on them based on the language of binary logic, zeros and ones. These innocuous little doodles on paper and screen have kept me alive. They still do. Thus I say, read my fellow humans, read and write. May the stories be read through the eyes and ears and touch, through ink, music, bumps and zeros and ones. May the history of the beings that could do so be read someday by someone. Let me know what you think. See you. <laughs> How do I stop this? <laughs> <laughs>